Good morning, everyone. So, today we are going to talk about PHP. We're going to talk a little bit about PHP and specifically we're going to talk about a subscriber question I got this morning. So let's get into it. So if you were posted a comment asking about, well, let's give the backstory just a little bit first and foremost. So this viewer has progressed to a point where he feels that he has a good understanding of CSS, HTML and JavaScript and he can make beautiful web pages and something that looks very stylish and nice per his definition. Awesome. So now he's having a little bit of a think about what, what would be the next step for him. And he's been talking, he mentioned to me that he's considering PHP and possibly making WordPress themes. So that's what we're going to talk about. WordPress and PHP and kind of how that fits into the IT world. So let's start by saying first and foremost, guys, that PHP is by far the world's most popular web programming language, hands down. It is massive in popularity and it is massive for one very good reason. It's very easy to build very nice websites with PHP. It's uh, it's a great language, a great scripting language for that sort of work. It's been around forever and ever. It is it's very beginner friendly and it's very, very stable technologies. So a WordPress theme or WordPress is, for those of you who may not know that, it's a content management system on top of PHP. In other words, it is a platform that has been developed in order for people to create so-called template websites with a administrative tool that allows the user of the product, the website itself, like the author of the, of the, well, not necessarily the author, but the owner of the website to switch out content, to add content, add plugins, widgets, all that good stuff. The sort of thing, and it's actually very, it's a very good, I would say very good platform for someone who wants to, without a lot of personal investment, get a website up and running, but it's also a good investment for people who want to have a fairly simple quote-unquote website but need that little bit of extra administrative tooling if you will that and you don't want to create a completely custom solution because there's really no point in having a completely custom solution so going into php is actually not a good it's not a bad idea at all the the thing to consider here, it's actually a very natural step. It's, I've been saying this in a few videos that I truly believe that as a beginner, it is vital for you to be a full stack developer. And I claim this, uh, I'm just, once again, I'm going to reach my finger. I'm going to say there's an exception to this, of course. I mean, that's why it's so important for us to kind of define your definition and my definition of what the different terms mean. Because some people will say front-end developer and then they tell me that most of the time they spend their time using Photoshop, Sketch and Adobe Illustrator or something of that nature. And they more design websites than they, than they build them. It's just a different, like, it's a different mindset. What I will tell you is that in general terms, when programmers and the IT industry talk about front-end developers, they talk about people who actually, like who do programming, not designers with programming skills, but actual programmers who focus more on the software as opposed to, to, to the user experience or creating the artworks. That define. So when we then talk about a full stack developer, what I will argue, what I define a full stack developer as, is a person who understands both the front-end code, in other words, JavaScript, CSS, HTML can produce and can produce now good-looking websites, but also has an understanding of the server so you can actually build the whole application yourself. The reason why this is important is because you should know that without both parts of this, you will be fairly limited as a developer. That might be fine. Maybe your, I don't know what your ambitions are, but to me, it's a very important part of, of it all. It's, uh, I think it's fairly fundamental. You don't have to specialize in being a server-side developer, but I think you should be able to produce a web server. And PHP is probably one of, if not the easiest way for you to do that at a professional, by, but still being at a professional level. Now, that being said, when it comes to WordPress themes, and if we talk about jobs and stuff of that nature, you should know that 
when you go into PHP, you're niching yourself a little bit on one specific type of application development. There are companies out there, say, take Facebook is probably the most famous one, who started using PHP and still used it to to a quite quite large scale actually. But in general terms, you should know that PHP is mostly used at the mid-level company level. It's actually very common that you have a lot of consultancies and agencies helping mid-sized companies or small-sized companies creating websites and web products and all that good stuff. But at the enterprise level, the really, really large scale, where we're talking about the size of, say, Google, or not necessarily that big, but a fairly large scale, PHP gets less common because well, the perception is that it's trickier to do certain things, and there are some things that people kind of, like, there are a few things that people think. I'm not gonna go into like all the political discussions and all the, you can go on the forums and hear what people think about PHP, because there's a lot of, there's a big range of what people feel about that language. But what I can tell you is that I know firsthand that PHP can be used at very large scale. Not saying that it's the best language for large scale development, but it can absolutely be used for large scale development. However, Theming, WordPress themes, that's an even more niched market. So if you want to be a freelancer, let's say that you want to make some extra money on the side or something, you're really into design, it's actually really, I would say as a, as a part-time job, creating web, like WordPress themes and stuff of that nature, is, it's great money. And there are absolutely companies who base their, their business model on creating WordPress themes or plugins and stuff of that nature for, for other companies. Though I will say, as one, just mention this again, that is usually at smaller scale. So if your ambition is to produce a lot of beautiful websites and have a lot of fun working with PHP, this is a great, you know, there's nothing wrong with going this route. But if your goal is to be a hardcore professional, I don't know what, I don't even want to know what to call it. So let's call it enterprise levels developer. This may not be the route to go. You can absolutely transition into this at a later point when you get the coding skills that you may need in order to apply for jobs at say a large company that uses something like, I don't know, Java or C Sharp, something of that nature. Those are the considerations. And finally, I will also touch on one thing and that is that you have to be a little bit careful with going into PHP too deeply because it's very much the same sort of thing as JavaScript. If you want, if your goal is to, if your if your ambition is to either be a freelancer, work at or work at an agency, or spend a lot of time with mid-sized companies, or just producing a lot of nice websites, this is perfect. But if you want to become a hardcore professional software developer, PHP, you should know, does not really have a culture around that sort of development. Now just hear me out here. That's not the fault of PHP. It's the same thing with JavaScript. I see a lot of JavaScript programmers and PHP programmers who can write and make some great applications, but they don't really have an understanding for how to do that at enterprise level. They're understanding of software architecture and software, like good practice in software usually is a little bit wanting. And as I said, that's more because the ecosystem and the culture around these languages is not as corporate, quote unquote, as something like Java or C Sharp or C or C++, for example. And that's something we always should consider. That's why I tell you that when somebody tells you that, oh yeah, you can use this language for absolutely everything. That's great. Most languages can be used for most things, but you should always remember the common case because the common case is the thing that matters because the common case for what a language is used for is the thing that it dictates what you're going to learn as a beginner when you start using that language. So hopefully you'll have a look at PHP and so forth, but carry these things with you guys, as I said, because there is a difference in what you're going to learn in PHP as opposed to, say, Java. Have a great day.